वेलकम फ्रेंड्स फॉर आवर फाइनल सेशन फॉर दिस हॉलीडेज प्रोग्राम वी सेट अप आई एम वेरी हैप्पी आई होप यू ऑल एंजॉयड दिस प्रोग्राम वी हैड हियर व्हिच आल्सो ब्रिंग्स अप दिस क्वेश्चन दैट हैज कम अप टू मी मेनी टाइम्स दैट इज अबाउट गिविंग गिफ्ट्स एंड प्रेजेंट्स इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ गिफ्ट्स आर गिवन ड्यूरिंग दिस मंथ December for the holidays, people are busy buying things at the stores. There are big stores. When I first came to see these big stores like Macy's and others large stores, I was surprised that there was so much stuff lying there. Hardly any customers, and hardly any salesperson to talk to to buy something. So how do these stores run? So I had to make a study, and the stores don't make any profit. The expense is so high to maintain those stores. For ten months, they run at almost at a loss. In two months, they catch up, get everything back, and they remember December, they catch up, and then they of course have special sales, marked down. Not ten percent, twenty percent, seventy percent off, eighty percent off. I said, then they must be losing again. If during the sales also they are marking it down, and that's the only time when they have to sell, there must be problems. As it happened, there was a big store called Marshall Fields, now become Macy's, I think. And my daughter got a job there. So she was put in accounting, so they put her in the pricing department. I hope they won't mind my revealing this secret <laughs> that she was supposed to be marking the price based upon the cost price and to add up. When I understood how much the markup was, ten times, thousand percent. So when you have a thousand percent markup, you fifty percent away, you are still getting fifty percent markup. So I discovered that the system here is. That the prices are marked very high, and then you give a discount. People don't bother to see what the price is; they say what the discount is. It's very impressive. It's a great uh, uh, psychological trick to put the price high, then say fifty percent off, seventy percent off, and then after seventy percent off, it leaves a good margin of profit for the merchant. So that's how the system works. But people are busy. Big lines are there to buy gifts for their relatives. So I happen to talk to many of these people. Are you happy to find these gifts? Oh no, it's a big burden. I was surprised to hear that. I was surprised how many people think a big burden is coming that we have to buy all those gifts that we have to give in during this festive season. I thought gift was. Giving out of joy and out of happiness to share something, but there is sort of a pressure on people that you have to give a gift because it's quiet. Otherwise, you'll be misunderstood by the family, misunderstood by your friends. So, the whole concept of giving gifts gave rise to questions in my mind: Is it necessary to give these gifts? People wanted to give me gifts. When I heard the stories of the people, they couldn't even afford. They had to scramble. Credit card companies were very happy at that time, <laughs> and the credit was being freely used to buy gifts. There was no other way to pay for the rest of the year, which is also something new for me. Buy now, pay later. But when I found there's a strain on people, I suggested, if you want to give me a gift, send me an astral gift. I have been receiving astral gifts, and uh, when I I had to undergo surgery for replacement of my knee, the metallic knee, so people sent me so many astral flowers. My hospital room got all filled up. I had to find space to get my face out. <laughs> so many flowers came. But the astral gift is easy to give. It doesn't touch your physical pocket here. You don't have to spend any dollars for an astral gift. So I do encourage people to send me astral gifts. So far as I am concerned, I'll be very happy if you just send me an astral gift. 
Now you might like to know how to send a rational gift. I'll explain it to you very briefly. First step is that you go to the third eye center. Sit in meditation. Go to the third eye center. And there, go to a shopping center. A flower shop. There are lots of them. Very beautiful ones. Everything that you can see here is better over there. You can test it out. What method do you use? One that all of us have called imagination. We all have imagination. Imagine you are getting some nice flowers which are going to pack up nicely and say astrally dispatched by telepathic means to me. I will get them. And um, if, if you want an acknowledgement, say on that acknowledgement dues. So I can send you an acknowledgement, maybe a little flower or something also. But this is so easy to do. It has to be done from there because that's the only place from where you can dispatch astrally. One good thing is that when you send me astral gifts, you start doing meditation. Some of you haven't done for a while. And by just sending a gift, you start meditation. It's a good thing too. So the astral gift don't put any pressure on you. They will give you happiness. I can assure you, an astral gift you send will give you more happiness. Now another problem came up. Somebody wanted to give a gift. And he said, I want to give you a gift. But will it create a new karma? Because that's another problem. If I give you a gift that you will have to give me a gift, I'll have to come back again next life to receive a gift. I don't want to come back in the next life. Should I accept a gift or not? So one person came to me. He says, I really want to give you a gift. But I know you'll have to come back to pay me back. I neither want you to come back nor me to come back. Therefore, I'm not giving you the gift. <laughs> I said, what kind of conversation is this? <laughs> I was looking, eyeing on the gift he had in his hand. <laughs> and I said, this is terrible. I, I almost expected to pick it up. <laughs> and then he talks like this. Oh, because he doesn't want to come in next life, doesn't want me to come in next life, gift is gone. <laughs> so, I, I still had an eye on the gift. I had to very quickly decide what to say. I said to him, how do you know that you are going to give me a gift now for which I will have to come back. How do you know I did not give you a gift in the last life? <laughs> and you have come back to return it to me. And if I, if I don't take it from you, you'll have to come back again to give me next time. <laughs> he said, here it is. I grabbed it. <laughs> How do we know when we have these kinds of events, should I take something or not? How do you know whether it's a settlement of an earlier karma or are you creating a new one? The difference between an old karma, which we call pralab, and a new karma we call karma. New karma creates a consequence. Old karma ends it. The, when the karma is paid off, it ends. So we want to end. Therefore, how do we determine that what is being created as a new karma and what is payment of the old one? What is normally and ordinarily done in life is old karma. What happens as a consequence of our normal way of living, old karma. What we do without due deliberation, old karma. But where we have to deliberate a lot and think a lot whether we should do it or not, that the options are do it or not to do it, then only you create new karma. That is why if giving of gifts and exchange of gifts is a normal thing that is happening in our life, it's settlement of old karma. And we should never bother about it. But if you have to decide, oh, I should give or not give, this person deserves or not deserves, that will be new karma. So you can easily distinguish, and this is only for not only for gifts, for everything. You hit somebody by accident. Oh, I have to pay back for that. No. You're paying back now already for something he hit you in the past. 
So when you do something where no deliberation is involved, it does not create a new karma, it's a pay off an old karma. Most of our life, we have to pay off our old karma. The whole destiny is based upon stack of events that are happening because of our old karma, yeah. old actions. And, and new actions are only happening in this life. Old actions can be picked up from several lives. When our destiny is constituted here and connected with old karma, old actions, those actions are picked up from several lives. But here we pay off only in one life and we create new ones only in one life. Of course, we create at a very high rate, very quick rate, the karma here. And that is why they can spread over several lives to pay off. Why we do that is because people think karma, the word karma means action. And literal translation can be what's your karma, what's your action. But in the law of karma, it does not relate to action, it relates to intention. If you intend to do something, you've already done it. Even Jesus Christ explains that. That is the, it's the intention to do that already creates the action. So if you act upon it, it enhances the karma, the level of the karma. So karma is created by our intention. And we have so many intentions all the time to do things. So that is why we are able to create a lot more karma by having so many intentions not carried out. But they're still stored and paid off in a certain way in the same life or in subsequent life. Somebody asked Buddha once, I, I heard a story that Gautam Buddha was he when he was giving talks, somebody asked him, What is uh, what is karma? Explain in simple word. He said, I'll tell you a story. And he told the story of a king who was passing by on his chariot or whatever he was going in. And as he passed by his store where they were selling leather boots, suitcases and bags and things like that. And the dealer of the store was standing there. The king had a thought. I'd like to kill that man. But he didn't do anything. He told his minister who was in the carriage, you know, I don't know why I felt like that. When I passed by, I felt like killing that man. So, they went away where they had to go. And the king then returned to his palace, but his minister went to that store. And he said, oh, you are selling this nice suitcases made of leather. He says, sales are so poor. I can't sell much, but I am using some sandalwood to make my stuff. And you do see, I am trying to now send my, sell my sandalwood instead of the leather goods. And the sandalwood is also not selling too much. I am hoping for the king to die. Because then a king's cremation, when they burn, they use sandalwood, not the regular wood. Then I will get some business. So this man realized that this, this man is really intending for the king to die. The king had that feeling in his head. So he said, can I buy the sandalwood and some bags of yours? He said, certainly. He was happy that here's a man I'm having very poor sales. So he bought a lot of it and took it to the king. He said, your majesty, you passed by the store of a man who was selling luggage and he had sandalwood on the side and you said you want to kill him. He has sent you a very beautiful gift of so much of his merchandise and sandalwood also as a gift. The king was surprised. The king said, I can't believe it. So he took a lot of jewelry and cash and went and gave it to that man. The people heard that story and they said, but master, we asked you, what is karma? He said, karma was not the exchange of things. Karma was the intention in the mind. This old story is told like this. So we sometimes forget that to intend to do something creates karma. New karma requires that we not only intend to do something, 
but intend to do something on which there is a choice or option. There should be more than one choice. I will do this or that. When you have a choice, do this or that, and you choose new karma. When there is no choice, the new karma is pay off of the old one. Most of our life, when events happen, we find we don't have any choice. They just go on happening. If you study our, our own lives, where we will be born, where we go to school, who will be our parents, no choice. Most of the time, we go through life. Accidents happen. We meet people on the way, no choice. About 80% of our life is based upon pralab, on destiny, previous destiny already created. It's only little gaps in the middle when we come across choice making. And that is when we use what we have a great gift from the creative power, a very big gift called free will. When we use free will, that's when we make a choice. Even when we use free will, if there is no choice, then it is not new karma. It has to be a choice that you are making where you consider it, deliberate it in your head. Should I do this or this? Should I do that or not do it? Those are the kind of options that you have which you consider. A deliberative process has to go through your mind in the process of using your free will. And then you create a karma. But we are using our free will mentally so much that we keep on creating karma. It's not necessary. Not at all necessary. You can live a life with very few karma created. But we do create a lot. The reservoir of old karma is so large that even if we try to lead a life completely free of karma, the law of karma can still bring up a next life from the reservoir we have created, the sinches karma we have created. And that is why uh, just avoiding karma does not really take us out of the system. But it's good to know that you, if you reduce your karma, then you have much less to come the next life. Now, the beauty is that when a perfect living master initiates us, one good thing he does is, and a very good thing, he destroys and burns away the sinchit karma. Now, I have mentioned this in several times before, that if the sinchit karma is burnt off, it is obvious if you have to come again, it will be based only on the karma of your existing life. So you will know how much it is, then it helps. If karma is low, so to come, it will be much better life and better life, better opportunity to do meditation, better opportunity to make progress. So that is why the burning of the Sinjit karma at the time of initiation is a big thing. Somebody has questioned this statement of mine, quoting from some books, saying that the books say that you can also finish your karma in the higher planes. So that is true. There is no conflict in that. Their karma can be created only when you experience free will and deliberate and make a choice, which can only be done in one form of life out of 8.4 billion forms of life, only one form of life, human life. Only in human life we create and in 8.4 billion forms of life we pay off. 8.4 billion also includes beings in the astral and causal planes. They are included in that. So that is why when karma is being paid off, it can be paid off anywhere. It can be paid off in dreams, can be paid off in wakeful state, can be paid off in the astral stage, can be paid off in the causal stage. All three levels or four levels of our awareness are controlled by the law of karma. Therefore, when they say part of the karma can be paid off there, yes, there is nothing wrong with it. But it is not the sentient karma that they are talking about. It is the karma which we have to have a burden in this life. And that's put off. And that's put off. It was created from sentient. Before you got initiated, it was sentient karma that was used to create this de destiny. You are living in a destiny created by sentient. And some of this is being cleared up by your masters in a higher level. There is no conflict in the two statements. And people don't understand it sometimes. And they think maybe we have to still laden with our karma. 
not if you have initiation by a perfect living master. It's a very interesting subject. If you study the whole law of karma, it's very interesting. The most interesting feature of this law is that there is no way to wipe out bad karma with good karma. Very few people understand that. Because we say, okay, you can give charity now, do very good deeds, your old karma will be wiped out. Does it happen like that? If that could happen, a lot of people would get away from here and finish the law of karma. It doesn't happen like that. You do something good, you are rewarded. Do something bad, punished. There have been extreme cases where a person was a murderer and he was leading a very vicious life, getting bad intentions toward people, deserved help. And then he suddenly changed his life. Met a master, became a wonderful person, and then he had to go one month in hell, one month in heaven. It can happen for any one of us. From the karma we create, good ones and bad ones, we can even get the extreme punishment and extreme reward also. Now, this question sometimes comes up. If we had a choice, okay, you have to spend one month in heaven and one month in hell, and you have a choice to go to either of them first, if you, any one of you have this subtle choice, how many of you would like to go to hell first? How many heaven first? A very divided opinion. I can understand it. The divided opinion because those who want to go to hell first feel if they went to heaven first, they think of hell all the time, even in heaven. Understandable. And if they want to go to uh, heaven first, they, they are hoping that maybe in their good deeds in heaven, hell may not come at all. But these are all thoughts. Law of karma is relentless. And that is a, the biggest prison. Time and to put events into it and link them with karma is the real prison in which we are. So that is why the wiping out of the sinchit karma and the balance to be taken care of in dreams. <coughs> People say, oh, I had a very bad accident in a dream. Does it mean I have a real accident? Was it a prophetic dream? And I explained to them, no. The real accident has been avoided by getting a dream and you are feeling good about it. That's only a dream. So that is why karma can be paid off in any of these four levels. Dream state, wakeful state, astral state, causal state. Above the causal state, there is no karma. Now some people say, if there is no karma, then what do we decide there? How do we use our free will there? Well, we don't use free will. Free will is used for karma in time and space. Supposing you have no time and space. I'm just it's an intellectual concept. Supposing you have no time and space. Do you need to use free will? No. There's no chance to use it. Do you have a will? Yes. Will to be there? You are in a state of being. So one has to remember that those states of being are so remarkable, so different from what we are experiencing that we have totally forgotten what our true home is like, what the feeling and being there means. It is not uh, going through events, it is not an experience going through. It is knowing you, who you really are, the discovery of your real self. And that is why this spiritual path which has been made possible for us in a human life, the best life we can possibly have for a spiritual activity. All others are paying off. We pay off karma in every other life create here. And because we have the power to experience free will, which of course is predetermined completely in the package, but looks like real free will here, looks like real choice making, when we use that real choice making here, we can make choices about the physical world. We can also make choices about internal world. That's the beauty of it. Free will is a double-edged sword. The same free will that creates karma outside, the same free will makes us seekers. The same free will makes us seeking inside. Same free will makes us meditate. Same free will makes us go to a master. Same free will creates a feeling for us to do certain things inside, on spiritual path. So it's a double-edged sword. We just have to convert what we were using for outside now we start using for insight. I think we could not be more fortunate 
as souls trapped in human beings. We could not be more fortunate than we are, that we know that perfect living masters exist and that by our seeking, we can find them. This is the best thing that could have happened to me. And I think if just to remember this, that how lucky we are to have this opportunity, that this would be the best celebration of our holiday. I'm so happy you all joined me. I wish you the best in the new year. I wish you the best in the remaining period for the holidays. Enjoy your holidays, no matter how. Exchange gifts without thinking about them. <laughs> no karma. And don't worry too much. Leave the worries behind in this hall today. Why? Because worry has never helped anybody. I went to a church in Rochester. Rochester, Minnesota. And there's a church and there was a, a little saying about worry outside the church. Worry. He said, worry is praying for failure. It's a prayer. Worry is a prayer. Prayer, we want to fail. Worry is a prayer for failure. Not a prayer for success. And it never solved any problem for anybody. <coughs> There's a distinction between a concern for a matter in your hand which you have to deal with. Deal with it bravely. Deal with it courageously. Deal with it fearlessly. But not worry about things of which you have no real awareness. We worry so much about what will happen. That can happen. This can happen. All right, I'll give you a little exercise. When you worry, you write down what you're worried about. That may happen. This may happen. And I assure you that almost nothing will happen out of the list you will make. Which means how useless our worry is. You're worrying about things that will never happen. We create so much fear, so much lack of confidence. We, we create depression in ourselves just by simply worrying too much. It's not necessary. So therefore, face things as they come. Face with courage. This is a show in which we are participating actively. It's a proactive show. We are in a very proactive show where we have to work with great strength and courage. And a great master used to say, to be on a spiritual path, you have to be a warrior. That's the word he used, warrior. You have to be a warrior to be here. And this is a battle. Battle with your own mind. Battle with the situations that are created. Enjoy the battle. Fight it out. And if a big power is behind you in that battle, you will win every time. Big power is the master power. Power of the master behind you. Remember that and fight your battles. You have no problem. I wish you all have great prosperity, joy, happiness next year. And it's a really great joy for me to come and share some jokes with you. <laughs> and I hope I'll have, still have my red jacket next time I see you. Thank you very much for joining me. And God bless you. Master's blessings with you. Great master's blessings with all of you. Thank you.